Welcome warmly to my lecture on translation or accounting exposure. This lecture is based on Harvard Business School notes on translation uh, and transaction exposure. These notes are written by Carl Kester and Richard Melnick. Um, I would also uh, recommend um, a dictionary of money and investing. Uh, a good dictionary is by Campbell and Harvey uh, from Duke University. The nice thing is that Professor Harvey has this dictionary on his web page um, for free. Um, um, therefore, you can legally download it. Or you may purchase a copy published by Wall Street Journal. Um, same applies to uh, notes on transaction and translation. Uh, these notes are rather concise um, um, and uh, um, they are a good source to read, but my lectures uh, are going to be self-contained and you would be able to follow the material without um, actually reading the Harvard Business and Lecture Notes that I recommend. Let's uh, start by a verbal definition. In this definition, certain, certain items that are important to us, items that we want to anchor our knowledge, are colored red. So those are the few things you could remember in an exam or when you're describing or defining this topic. And then you could build up uh, a phrase based on those few words. Translation risk. When due to tax or security regulations. So this part of it, it says that translation risk is in a word of dictatorship. The tax authority or the regulators uh, impose this risk on our companies and they would tell us exactly how to do it. And of course, the nice thing about a word of dictatorship is uh, the fact that we don't have to think too hard. They tell us exactly what to do. The regulations would be given. Not that the fir uh, firms um, take these regulations without complaining about them, and not that these regulations are different in different countries. Therefore, there is some room for philosophical discussions and of course, the regulators themselves could consider um, moving from one set of rules to the others based on advantages and disadvantages of these methods. So back to this definition, notice that we are hanging our hat on every word. So taxes matter in this translation exposure, regulations matter. And um, then we are asked to make our financial statements. These are yearly or quarterly statements that a firm um, has to prepare to give information to its investors or meet tax regulations um, or meet uh, regulations regarding um, being registered um, in a uh, uh, security and exchange and being traded on exchange or being included in an index. To give you a very quick example here, uh, BMW for a while refused to um, issue quarterly financial statements, perhaps because their earnings were, uh, were volatile and they didn't want to report it. Now that was okay by tax authority and regulatory authorities in Germany, but BMW was um, part of an index um, for German market DAX, and that index required the firms to publish quarterly uh, financial statements. Um, and because BMW did not follow these requirements, they were simply kicked out of that index. So there are various different organizations that put pressure on our company to um, publish this periodic financial statements. 
Now imagine a company has a foreign subsidiary. Uh, then it would prepare a consolidated financial statement. Consolidated means item by item, all the variable costs, fixed costs, uh, revenues, uh, profit, taxes are added to each other and one financial statement for the entire um, company and the parent company and its subsidiaries is reported consolidated statement to do this the foreign income in a foreign currency must be reported in home currency so if a german firm has a subsidiary in japan we have to make that yen based financial statement income statement or balance sheet into euros and added up to uh, the income um, and expenses of our other subsidiaries um, and report and consolidated accounting statement. Notice that it is wrong and sometimes it is done where a firm takes the profit from a subsidiary and just reports that profit as income. That would be an accounting shenanigan, something that is not acceptable. So when we are doing consolidated accounting, we count all the beans, cost and um, the revenues and profit and the item, item by item. Therefore, a good picture um, of our operations is given. Adding just the profit of a subsidiary to revenue um, exaggerates revenue, exaggerates uh, sales revenue, and then uh, we would not be giving an honest um, report to outside uh, uh, stakeholders. Okay, so we are translating. Uh, let's focus on this word translating. We don't mean that we are going to translate Japanese writing into German writing. We mean that we make our yen or currency um, uh, to euro. Okay, so foreign subsidiaries um, currency is translated into home currency. Then we get to this word book value, which is an important word in finance and accounting. Book value is how much an item is worth in our accounting statements, in the balance sheet, for example. Book value is not necessarily the same as market value. Market value is how much we can sell the asset in a well-functioning liquid market at the moment when we are not under financial stress. Uh, a good example is uh, a parcel of land that was purchased in 1950s by our company and its value is booked or written in accounting statements um, at the purchasing price and there were no adjustments made all these years. A reasonable person knows that that land price would be quite different in the marketplace today. So why don't we do market values in accounting? Well, um, if the tax authorities allow uh, firms um, to uh, write down how much let's say this laptop that you have in front of you is worth and they may be able to go to ebay or some other place where used laptops are traded um, and uh, find various different prices and report one of those that is advantageous to them this leaves too much room for wiggling our way out of taxes optimizing or in less polite words cheating so book values um, are according to the standard accounting calculations um, and in that field um, they are improving the way they report book values for example that uh, land uh, example that i talked about in 1950s um, may not hold um, under every accounting jurisdiction we often uh, may uh, recapture the value of this land or recalculate it based on 
rules in accounting when the value is substantially increased or when the value is um, uh, decreased when the value of the asset or building is decreased we may report impairment and often we have to but the still book values are considerably different from market values okay the book value of the foreign subsidiary to its domestic holders varies well the value is in uh, a foreign currency the foreign currency goes half price and suddenly the asset is worth half as much as it was before in uh, um, our home currency uh, but we're not selling that asset and this is a paper loss that we are not realizing it's only a loss of book value but currency fluctuations affect the book value of our foreign subsidiary translation exposure or translation risk which has another name called accounting uh, exposure uh, refers to the impact of exchange rate changes how a change in exchange rate um, affects the parents published consolidated financial statements and of course by now you know the meaning of the word consolidated and financial statements um, are often balance sheet and income statement and there, there are other ones too of course but there, these two are the major ones that we want to focus in this lecture let us continue to the next slide let's consider um, a very simple example to drive this point about translation exposure home this example is from harvard business school lecture notes um, and in their example they say there is a swiss subsidiary of, of an american firm americans own a firm in switzerland and that Swiss subsidiary deposits 1 million Swiss franc in a Swiss bank. Um, this example um, is a bit old, uh, but very good for educational purposes. It has a round number. Two Swiss francs are worth a dollar. Um, these days, Swiss franc is uh, much closer to parity one Swiss franc per dollar and of course the value changes every day that uh, you may listen to these lectures but for the sake of this classroom exercise take two Swiss franc equals a dollar at that rate when we do our consolidated accounts in the USA we take this one million Swiss franc cash that we have in the bank in Switzerland and we divide it by two Swiss francs per dollar and we get a value of five hundred thousand dollars however the value of dollar versus Swiss franc doesn't stay constant as my discussion that the value is uh, these days one to one in this uh, classroom ex example um, after a period uh, that uh, after a period of time after a period when we do our accounting um, statements Swiss franc had weakened and two and a half Swiss francs by a dollar huh. wishful thinking on the part of Harvard Business School Swiss franc doesn't weaken ah just uh, just a lame joke right but anyways Swiss franc is now two and a half Swiss franc per dollar in this classroom example well you take that same million a Swiss franc uh, cash that you have in the bank in the subsidiary of this American firm and you divide it by two and a half Swiss franc per dollar and you get four hundred thousand dollars so poof in uh, one accounting period hundred thousand dollar of cash has disappeared well not so fast the Swiss franc is sitting in a Swiss bank and is paying Swiss salaries for your company. It buys the same stuff, same purchasing power. It pays the same amount of salaries. You are not intending to bring the cash to US. Therefore, we say this loss is an accounting loss or a paper loss. No cash flow is involved. Cash flow is a very important word in finance 
uh, think of a river of cash. Cash flows in that river. When cash goes out of the treasury of a company, it's negative cash flow. When cash goes in the treasury of company or in your wallet, it's positive cash flow. And in finance, the difference is net cash flow. So here we did not have a negative cash flow of 100,000 going out of this firm. This firm had a million Swiss franc cash sitting in the bank and nothing flew out or in it, in that account. The unrealized, and that's a very good word, again, uh, telling us that this is paper loss. The unrealized translation loss of 100,000 is incurred. We call it a realized translation loss. If we sold the company um, and someone made the money to dollars and now instead of 1 million Swiss franc, they have 400,000 and they would realize the $100,000 loss because Swiss franc had become weak. But because we are not selling the subsidiary, this is an unrealized translation loss. The cash is to be used to purchase Swiss goods and pay Swiss salaries. Therefore, translation to dollar may not affect the purchasing power of the currency. Notice that I repeat, repeating is good for us, um, makes you remember this at the exam time. And of course, um, you have this in writing in front of you too. The loss is also a book value loss. M money in the accounting books is lost, so we call it a book value loss. As the market value of the subsidiary in Switzerland may not go down by $100,000. All right, let's go to uh, different translation methods. There are several well-known translation methods that most countries of the world follow. And for purpose of this le lecture, we learn all of them. They're not that difficult. And it gives us a comparison base. We can compare them to each other and decide which one um, has uh, which shortcomings and which benefits. Neither one is superior. Uh, they all have some shortcomings and some benefits. And we have a bit of discussion which country covers which method. And of course, in international finance, um, if you have subsidiaries in different countries and have to report in different jurisdictions, um, you would uh, have a working introduction to each one of these methods. All these methods have problems. So this slide starts by pointing those problems, the problems with translation methods. Part of this uh, uh, problem is the fact that accounting is a word of dictatorship. They tell us what to do, and what we do is affecting our bottom line, causes volatility, and this volatility is costly. Translation exposure or risk affects the company's ab ability to raise capital. When we go to a bank and we want to get a loan, uh, debt capital, they do consider that now Swiss franc has become cheaper and on paper, um, we have a loss, even though th there is no cash flow, uh, negative cash flow involved. Therefore, they may charge us a higher interest on the on loan. Our um, credit rating may suffer, and then we would have an additional default risk premium, an extra uh, half a percentage interest rate. That interest rate is the cost of debt capital. The cost of debt capital may go higher for us. All of this bec uh, is because of a paper loss, not a realized loss. Earning per share would be affected. Let's think of a minute uh, about what this earning per share is. This is a very common accounting ratio that most of you have heard before or seen in uh, newspapers or financial news. Um, the words sort of talk to you. 
it says take the earnings and earnings to us is net income uh, uh, in german we call it profit or loss we call it, uh, income statement profit and loss statement you go to the bottom of this income statement and you read the uh, earnings of the firm or the net income it says per share so you divide it by the number of shares that the company has so if the net income is a million dollars and we have a million shares outstanding there then a million dollars divided by a million shares gives us a dollar per share a dollar earning per share and roughly that means every uh, share is entitled to one dollar of profit or earnings It's a stock price. The stock market looks at information that accounting uh, statements generate. Earning per share, when it goes lower, it might affect our stock price. Uh, when uh, our subsidiary is in a country uh, that their currency uh, goes half price and therefore uh, our uh, consolidated income statement uh, shows uh, less profit or, and our consolidated balance sheet shows less assets or a stock price might get affected by this news by this uh, lowering of our assets and profits and of course uh, earning per share is one key financial ratios and there are others that are similarly affected by a change in um, our accounting income and the value of assets in uh, our consolidated accounting statements so other key financial ratios uh, would be affected and the stock price depends on these and of course there are other consequences for example um, some debt covenants promises that we make when we issue bonds may depend on these key financial ratios being in a certain range and that range might start varying so this discussion tells us that there is a real consequence to this translation risk. Uh, even though this is a paper loss, the paper loss can affect, um, can have a, f uh, um, a fundamental effect on our value um, and on um, the real side of the business um, you should consider this financial side and real side as uh, two opposite uh, ideas um, so real side is how we produce and how um, we sell and how uh, our assets are valued um, but this real side could be uh, affected by uh, our finances and our accounting books accounting rules for foreign currency translation is a controversial issue companies complain about government imposing these uh, translation rules and one reason for this complaint is that different translation methods will result in different reported profits uh, government with its rules suddenly causes a loss or makes our earnings fluctuate based on the methods that we use in translation or are dictated for our use and these methods are arbitrary they're up to the, um, the whim of a regulator the translation reports are arbitrary in the sense that they are subject to whim of regulators and are often imperfect in showing real financial consequences of business activity. So they're not coming uh, based on um, some financial consideration, um, optimization. Um, they're coming basically based on a regulatory decision let's look at uh, translation methods and uh, discuss their 
benefits and shortcomings and practice with them a bit.